Hello, thank you. I hope you hear us correctly. Uh, yeah, we are super excited to be here. Thanks, All Systems Go, for the invite. We are super happy. Uh, yeah, so in this talk, we are going to talk about Systemd, Systemd CISX, uh, Immutable Operating System Container Arrays. So it's a bit um, a follow up from last year where Luca and Kai gave a talk about Systemd CISX. So it's like an update on what's going on in this, uh, in this world. Uh, before going on, I'm going to quickly introduce myself. My name is Mathieu. I work as a software engineer inside Microsoft. I mainly work on Flatcar operating system, which is a container OS. So it's a Linux-based OS designed to run container workloads. And outside of work, I've co-founded SRE France, which is a French association where we organize meetups and DevOps events uh, yeah, in France. What about you, Timothy? Thanks, Mathieu. So hey, I'm Timothée Ravier, and I'm a chorus engineer at Red Hat. Uh, on Fedora, I also work on the Fedora Atomic Desktop, so Silver Blue, Kino White. And on the KDE side of things, I'm a developer and I also help maintain the KDE Flatpaks on FlatHub. So all right. Go ahead, Mathieu. Thank you. So yeah, let's quickly set the context for this talk. Um, basically, we're going to talk about systemd and systemd CISX, but apply to uh, immutable operating system. So Flatcar and Fedora Core OS are container OS, and they are designed to run containers workloads. It can be single containers, or can be bigger workloads like Kubernetes nodes or stuff like that. Uh, most of the time, we recommend to the users to run their application inside containers. Uh, but uh, yeah, most of the time uh, you can package your stuff into containers, but there is some uh, edge case where it's not possible. So for example, uh, if you want to bring your own package, but you can't uh, use it as a container, you might need to rebuild yourself the whole operating system, uh, which is very time consuming and can be complicated. Uh, because by definition, those systems are immutable, which means you can't really use apt uh, uh, install whatever uh, package you want or stuff like that. So if you want to bring your own package into the image, whether you use containers or you build yourself or you use uh, stati statically linked binaries. For example, if you want to install Kubernetes uh, on uh, Flatcar, you can just pull the Kubernetes binaries and that's it. But uh, yeah, this approach is not uh, really nice also because you need to pull some, uh, I don't know, unit service or stuff like that if you want to enable Kubernetes or other stuff. Uh, and you also need to pull the configuration and stuff like that. And also you need to rely on the fact that everything is statically compiled, which is not always the case. So yeah, you have some alternatives if you want, don't want to run things inside containers, but yeah, it's limited. And it's not really scalable, and that's the point of using Flatcar or Fedora OS or this kind of operating system is to be able to scale. Uh, if you need to rebuild the images each time you want to bring a new package or you want to update a package, yeah, that's not something you can rely on. So here, enter systemd CISX as another alternative. So what is systemd CISX? Uh, so I'm going to use the term image. Uh, during the talk, uh, basically it refers to the system this is X image. Um, what is it? An image, it can be a plain directory, it can be better FS sub volume, it can be, yeah, uh, um, error FS or squash FS image uh, that you're going to mount as overlay FS on slash USR slash OPT. Uh, so yeah, it basically used overlay file system. Uh, and basically everything can be a CISX image, and that's pretty convenient for a system that has a slash user in read-only, for example. So yeah, that's a way to bring new things inside your system, especially if the system can't be extended with the regular ways. So let's yeah, have a quick look on what it is. So this is a regular system with slash user bin and binaries inside. Um, let's suppose I have a CISX image that brings the Docker binaries, but also all the Docker libraries and the uh, systemd configuration file for Docker and stuff like that. But yeah, let's keep things simple, and I'm just going to, yeah, to use this example. And by issu uh, issuing this command, systemd CISX merge, I will be able to merge my system with the CISX image. And Magi, I have Docker, <laughs> sorry, voila, I have Docker uh, available on my system uh, because I merged the CISX image with the base system. So yeah, that's very convenient and now Docker is available in the whole system for every user. So let's see a few use cases of systemd CISX and where it can be uh, convenient. 
Yes, thank you, Matthew. So one of the idea behind this is that um, we tried looking at, OK, how do we do things right now? And would it be nicer to do this using systemd CSX? And one of those use cases is debugging tools. So when you've got debugging tools, usually you Technically, you can run them from a container. So you could pull down the uh, container with all the debug tools, uh, C uh, GDB, ASTRES, and all those things, and run them from there, and r debug your, own, your, your local system with it. So it would probably mean being a privileged container with everything disabled, all the security features disabled, so that you can access to get access to everything. But while you can do it, the experience is not really there. It's not really great. You have to relearn how things work. You have to relearn how to escape namespace or how to manage things. You kind of have to have deep, deep experience, deep understanding of all of, all of how all of this is set up so that you can actually use it. So you're using system extension for including debugging tools temporarily on your system, for example, is really, really useful. Um, so yeah, just getting a CSX with all of those, um, it makes things much, much easier. So that's what we have as an example here. Uh, so I've created a debug, uh, debugging tool CSX. It has GDB and S-Trace inside of it, and a few uh, small uh, configuration files for systemd to understand that it's a CSX, and uh, pack that into a Nero FS. Um, and so then I go to systemd CSX status, and I see that my system extension has been recognized, and uh, I can uh, restart the service, and boom, I got it, and can just call a trace like I would normally on a system. That's like one of the big plus. The second thing is configuration management. So for a lot of those systems, neither Flatcar nor Fedora CoreOS include Python right now. So if you want to use traditional configuration management systems, whether you want it or whether you're forced to use it, or there's plenty of use case, people want to use it anyway on Flatcar or on Fedora CoreOS. And so they want to use Ansible and all those tools. They are used to having them, or they are reinvested in those, and they want to use it uh, with those systems. And they, right now, they are having troubles because there's no Python installed in the system. And this is one of the way to actually just bring Python to the system, uh, just as you need, as, just as much as you need uh, via system extension. And uh, it's it's fairly easy. Um, I've, there's another example here with the way I've done that. I created a Python system extension. It has just the Python binaries and all, uh, some, some libraries. Uh, you can get it, uh, and you can enable it as a system extension. And yeah, use Python just like you would use on a regular system, uh, as if it was installed directly, except now it's in a system extension. And you can enable it, disable it on demand, and see uh, as you like. Yeah, and not everything. Not everything can run from containers, uh, especially the container engines itself. Uh, if you want to switch container engines, let's say you want to stay on an older version because we, we require compatibility with an older version of Kubernetes, for example. Or on the other side, you want to switch to a newer version because you want to test out the newer version because it before it goes in, uh, before it comes the stable one, you want to test things out. Uh, for another use case, for example, is like uh, Podman Desktop. Podman Desktop has a version of Fedora CRS with each version being fixed on a version of Podman. So you now need to have, essentially, each system has a specific version of the container engine. And so with all of this, this, is, this system extension is another way to replace the container engine on a system uh, so that you get this nice benefit here. And an option would also be to remove them from the system, uh, completely system-based image. Uh, because like right now, for example, on Fedora CoreOS, we want to offer the choice of both major container engines, and so we can have to install them both at the same time so that users can pick and choose the one they want to actually use. But yeah, that's, that's not great. So let's see how this is done with Flatcar. So yeah, as Timothée said, uh, one of the main interests would be to remove and to add a CISEX extension, system, system extension. So yeah, the idea behind this is from an operating system point of view, you give to the user the flexibility uh, to modify the system even if this one is immutable. So let's have a look on Flatcar, how we do things. Uh, maybe you're not aware about this, but when you run Docker command on Flatcar, it basically uses systemd CISEX behind because Docker is shipped as a systemd CISEX on Flatcar, by default, on alpha, beta, stable, LTS. Uh, it's the same thing for containerd, 
and the same things for the OEM. So when I talk about OEM, it's all the stuff related to the vendors. Uh, for example, if you run Flatcar on AWS, uh, you need the Amazon SSM agent, for example. It will be shipped inside the CZX image uh, as part of the OEM. Uh, but let's not talk about this today. Uh, so yeah, Docker and container D are shipped uh, as CZX, so that's pretty nice because you use CZX without, uh, with, without knowing it. Uh, now let's say I use uh, Flatcar as a Kubernetes node and I don't want to use Docker because uh, as a Kubernetes node I just need container D to be available on my system. So I can just remove the CZX image of Docker and keep the container D uh, around. So now Docker is not available on my system. Uh, this doesn't mean that Docker uh, is uh, not available in the path. It means that everything related to Docker, the libraries, the configuration, the daemon, the CLI, everything is removed. It's unmerged from the system. So that's pretty convenient. Uh, so yeah, we can see that now I'm using ContainerD to run my stuff. Uh, now let's go deeper. Let's suppose I don't want to use Docker. I don't want to use ContainerD, but I want to use Cryo as a container runtime interface for my Kubernetes uh, node. So that's, that's possible because there is a CZX for Cryo and I just removed the container D CZX. So now I just yeah, tweaked my system, my base system, without rebuilding the whole image, uh, without doing yeah, shenanigans. I just removed the CZX image from the, the base OS and pull a new uh, Cryo CZX image. So that's pretty convenient. From a provisioning point of view, if you're using Flatcar or Fedora Core OS, you might be, uh, uh, you might know this configuration. So this is ignition and butane, and we can see that everything is just like 20 lines of code. I just, uh, yeah, symlink the Docker Flatcar and Container D Flatcar to a dev null, like so. I remove basically the CZX image available on the system, and I pull the Cryo uh, CZX image from the CZX bakery. What is a CZX bakery? This is a way to provide CZX images as GitHub release artifact. So with GitHub Actions, Flatcar team will build a bunch of uh, images, uh, CZX images to be yeah, consumed by uh, operating system. So what is the, the current status of CZX images on Flatcar? So we have two kinds of images, the official images, so this is the one that are built in, for example, Docker and ContainerD and OEM, as we've just seen. And we have some images that are uh, official, but not uh, enabled. So they are disabled at runtime, but you can easily enable. Which means, for example, if I boot a Flatcar instance and I say, OK, pull uh, Podman CZX extension, well, it's going to pull Podman during the boot of the instance. And when I will SSH on my uh, Flatcar node, I will be able to use Podman. And same for ZFS or Python. And we have the community supported. So this is the CZX Bakery, which I just mentioned. So this is like uh, yeah, a bunch of CZX images that everyone can use. It's not bound to Flatcar, so you can just download it. For example, there is NVIDIA, uh, there is Kubernetes. So this is, yeah, for example, for the Kubernetes, it's the binaries, simple, uh, statically compiled, and some systemd uh, configuration files. So you have everything in one place. Uh, same for NVIDIA, we have also Tailscale. Well, it's community supported. And for the official CZX images, they are built as part of the Flatcar CI. So they use the whole existing mechanism uh, for flat, uh, as Flatcar to build things. So we build the CZX images using Gen2 uh, eBuild files, so Gen2 recipes to build, to build packages, except that uh, instead of targeting the Berries image, we're targeting a CZX uh, directory. Uh, and same as any Flatcar artifact, you can inspect what it, what's inside and you can see that it's only user stuff related because it's CZX and it's only user stuff. So about the build. That's an interesting question. It's how do you build CZX and how do you provide CZX? So this is an example on the CZX Bakery. There is uh, yeah, some kind of recipe to build CZX images from OCI artifact. Fine. There is on a fork of the CZX Bakery uh, recipe to build CZX image from Nix uh, spec. Fine. This is another way to build CZX. Uh, basically, statically compile uh, Vim or no, it was not Vim. It was uh, yeah, HR proxy or something like that. Well, anyway, build from a Docker image using Alpine image, and you build some statically stuff, and you put them into a CZX. Okay, that's another way to do things. Uh, okay, another way to build CZX images is to use Emerge, uh, as we are doing on Flatcar side, to build things. 
So this leads to that question, until when someone will just create a CISX file <laughs> and to be able to build CISX uh, from, from, yeah, from a specification file. So yeah, that's a question with Timothy we, we got during, while doing, doing this talk is, uh, yeah, everyone wants to build CISX image at this moment, but uh, there is no common way to do things. Uh, yeah, how should we build them or should we distribute them? Uh, and does it make sense to have some common way to do the things? So yeah, that's an open question. There is no answer yet. What about Fedora? Yeah, good question. So let's look at how we could do things on Fedora. I say could do because right now there's nothing really official being built in Fedora. So there's no official CISEX being built and there's no really official way of building them. Uh, not that we need one especially official, but like there's no there's nothing built and signed by a distribution. That's what I mean by official. Uh, so I've just made my own. So just like they've been, everybody made their own. I just made one uh, to build system extension from RPMs uh, and ship them as the RFS files. Uh, we could probably make that a little bit nicer and integrate that into Kiwi or MKO MSI or something like that. Uh, but there's yeah, there's there's other options. It's it's still I think it's still an open question. Um, Another thing that would be probably nice and interesting to investigate is how to build system extension actually from containers. So these system extension, they extend the base system. So they are actually a lot of uh, small files that are added on top of a base system and usually you want them to be kind of in sync or just have the diff essentially between what you actually want to get on top and what you have on your base system. And this is pretty much what container layers do. They toss out from a base image and then you add stuff in the layer and in the layer you just have the diff that you added uh, with the, depending on how you build it, but you still get in the layers just the diff uh, of what you've added to the base image. And so if we could take this diff and put it into a Nero FS file, for example, and use this as a sysex, that would be something interesting because we could reuse all the tools that we have and, and, and build them this way. We would still have to fix the Linux labels and all those nasty stuff, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's probably doable. Uh, it's uh, likely something we'll investigate uh, after. Another use case for uh, CISEX, so one of the big ones for CISEX uh, in Fedora Chorus uh, that would like you to be investigating is uh, about just like Flatcar did, is removing the container runtimes from the base systems. So moving uh, Mobi Engine, Docker, and Podman outside uh, of the base image so that you can actually swap them or disable one or the other. And so yeah, that's like a strong, strong benefit of all of this, uh, and that, that would be really interesting. On the more desktop side of things, uh, usually a recurrent problem is that we are needing to have codecs or NVIDIA drivers and all of those things, and they need to be distributed in some form. Sometimes there's legal constraints around it, and so we cannot just ship it as part of the operating system. And so building all of those codecs and bits into system extension could help us extend all of those uh, image-based systems, such as the atomic desktops. Another very frequent request is how do we do libvirt, for example, or incus on top of those systems, and that the system extension could be a solution. And finally, if you've seen the Bootsy talk either this morning or this afternoon, uh, you might have known or heard that, hey, we're building something around container images uh, for the bootable container systems in Fedora CoreOS and the more larger Fedora ecosystem. And so you might be wondering, hey, what, what's the interaction between all of those? And I think the idea is it's different trade-offs. So depending on what you want to do, it might be better to use bootable container tech, or it might be better to do CSEX. So essentially, the idea is that when you would use package layering, for example, using RPM student system right now, it's kind of slow. It takes a lot of time to do all the layering and all those operations, and it's, it's hard to optimize, essentially. The, with the container tech, uh, one downside of using the containers is that when you build things using containers, you get layers for sure, but you get those layers in order. So you're going to just like pick and choose which layer you want to still get, and you have to be careful of things you do. And if you want to get two different images, then you have to do two different builds, etc., etc. And you can just, not, can just pick a layer outside of it. With the system extension, you've got this flexibility. You can just pick the one you want and uh, disable the ones you, you don't need and remove them from the system. So that's like a big advantage. But at the same time, you get the downside that you have to keep the system extension in sync with what you have on your system, especially if you don't reship everything in, into the CSEX. So you, you have to make sure that you don't have incompatible libraries or something like that, and you don't break your host by bringing stuff from, from the CSEX. 
So yeah, it's there's always uh, downsides. It's faster in some places. It's safer in some places. It, it differs. Uh, it varies depending on the use case. And that's it. That's few leaks around uh, where you can find the CSX and where you can find the scripts uh, I've made. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. And we're open for questions. Questions? Yes. Uh, first here. So thank you very much for the quick introduction. Um, so I have my immutable secure system now, and I can mount any sys extension. Then is there an option to just allow properly signed images to be um, mounted, or? Is there a PCR measurement done? Um, so how can I be sure that it's still a trustable system then? <laughs> so Leonard is raising his hand on me because like, that's a yeah, system D technical question. I don't really have an answer for. But I do. So yes, <laughs> DMVR is designed. So the, the key needs to be in the kernel keyring, one of the three. I'll talk about that in my next talk. And yes, we measure the, this stuff as well on boot, yes. Oh, yes, is the answer. One, one bit here is that it's, you, you need to be root, of course, to do all of those things. So you, you still need to be admin on the system. Uh, this is purely additive. You're not supposed to upgrade stuff that is found in the base image with this mechanism. Sorry, come again. I didn't This is purely additive. You're adding things on top of the base image. You're not replacing or upgrading anything. No, you're not replacing. For ex uh, yes, actually, you replace. For example, for Flatcar, initially, it was Docker, like any other packages shipped into the base image. And we decided to yeah, give the user the flexibility to decide to keep or to remove Docker by using CSX images. Okay. But uh, from a user perspective, from a sysadmin perspective, your tools tend to save. Uh, I mean, everything is under user bin and everything is available. So you don't need to do more stuff if you want to use those sysx images. They are built in by default and you can just disable them if you want. Okay, thanks. And yeah, for the update mechanism, that's also a good, good question. Uh, for example, uh, using the CSX Bakery, we do provide also some sys update configuration files, which means, for example, for the Kubernetes I was just showing, there is the version 1.31.2, for example. The day there is a 1.31.3, for example, systemd sys update, which is another mechanism of systemd, will pull this new image and replace uh, the current uh, CSX image. So, so that's pretty convenient to keep your, st your stuff up to date. Yeah, not really a question, but just a <laughs> sort of promotion maybe. So please stay tuned for a lightning talk where I talk about our tool that we built to build CSX. Yes, another one. Yes, actually. another one, yeah. Other questions? <laughs> Is it the CSX file approach? <laughs> um, you, for the Fedora CoS uh, parts, um, you are an OS tree distribution anyway, right? So, yeah. of course, I think systemd, uh, sysx, and systemd configs are the best things in the world. But um, uh, how come you're not using OS3 for this kind of composition? Like, because I thought this was, uh, OS3 was good at this kind of composition, is it not? Like, I mean, what's the rationale for not trying to use OS3 for composing images and preferring systemd sysx? I mean, I have my reasons why I think sysx better is, but I was curious about uh, how this came to be. Yeah, it's a good question. So, I think the the ID being OS is like you compose the whole system, you compose the whole system, so you get libc and everything and everything. So, but hey, we in the system extension I made for for Fedora CoreOS, you you don't want all of those. You just want the diff. You just want the packages on top. And like, so you could theoretically make that via yeah, OS3, but uh, that would be manual as well. Uh, so there's like no real advantage to doing it. But. There's, like, OS3 is full of the whole tree. Like, the way you compose image, compose OS3 image right now, you compose a whole tree. You compose either bootable one with a kernel, et cetera, or even you can do containers, but uh, without a container, but you still get GDPC and all those things because you resolve all the dependencies. It's, it's a full image, essentially. Here, we don't want a full image. We just want the diff. Uh, for SysX Bakery, you mentioned running it on different distros. Uh, how does that work? Because SysX so for, the for um, almost all the, of the software of SysX Bakery, they are statically compiled, and also so that should work in a way on every system. 
should. And for the CSX specification, you have this ID uh, in the extension file that bound a specific uh, CSX to be uh, load merge into a specific system. So for the CSX Becker it's the any system. So basically, you should be able to use it on any uh, platforms that support system CSX, which means everyone. <laughs> okay, thank you. We are out of time. Thank you.